Hello Wargamers, today I have part one of two of a series of bat reps that I uh, filmed with my friend Gil who did our Blood Angels video. So as you might expect, this is a Tau versus Blood Angels bat rep. Uh, I'll release this one today obviously and then the next one will be out in a couple days so come back check that out. Um, this first one is my first bat rep using my new Ivara battle suit from uh, Forge World and I also threw in both my remores as well. The list isn't meant to be competitive um, It's just meant to be more of a, a fun list so that I could use all my toys that I might not be able to use otherwise so um, You can see the list in the description below and uh, Yeah, if you have any questions uh, Let me know what you think I'll do a little thing at the end of the video kind of talking about how I think the Ivara did just because this is my first time actually using it and I think um, you know, it's kind of a, it's a really cool toy. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the end of the video. Gamers, and welcome to another uh, Invasive Wargaming Bat Rep. Now, uh, I'm playing against my friend Gil. He's fielding his new Blood Angels, and I'm fielding my uh, Forge World Tau list. Uh, you can see both lists in the description below. Um, but I realized I forgot to take video before uh, the beginning of turn one, so my apologies, but I'll try to incorporate some of that information into this segment here. So um, we're playing Don, uh, Dawn of War, Maelstrom of War, um, Mission 3. We're doing the one where you have the three tactical objectives and uh, you can steal each other's. Mission 4. Um, so I deployed over here. Um, I had my crisis suit team and commander, uh, my normal riptide, and then my broadsides for the firebase support cadre here. My Yvara battle suit was positioned here as well. Uh, I drew uh, control objective six, which is the objective over here, control objective two, which is the objective over here, and uh, control all the objectives, which wasn't going to happen. So, uh, beginning of turn one, my opponent did not seize. I uh, had the Yvara fly over to this objective where uh, he was then close enough to a unit of tactical marines to uh, unload his blamer and wipe them off the board. Um, so, so far so good for the Yvara. And then uh, basically everyone else shot at this unit of tactical marines um, and whittled them down to four dudes except for these uh, plasma rifle crisis suits, which were able to pick um, one of the sanguinary guard up over here. So um, that is the uh, end of top of turn one. I score two objectives for controlling six and two, and uh, on to Blood Angels turn one. All right, so bottom of turn one, Blood Angels uh, went ahead and moved the remnants of their force over here behind the uh, bastion and uh, then dropped one of the two pods with uh, dreadnoughts right in my front line here. Yeah. <laughs> um, this guy here uh, came, popped out, got intercepted by uh, one unit of broadsides and the fusion blasters from the riptide. Left it with one hull point, but he still laid down um, a melt a gun and a flamer, enough to kill two um, marker drones and one crisis suit. Actually, I got a roll for this, so let's see if they run off the board. They do not, thankfully. And yeah, that was about it. Uh, his tactical objectives were to uh, sex successfully cast one psychic power, which was impossible because um, his guy was off the board. Um, then he had defend the line, which he only had two guys back there. He needed three, so that didn't happen. And then he also had to kill one unit in his shooting phase, which didn't happen. So um, none of those objectives were achieved this turn. So on to Tau turn two. All right, uh, after the top of turn two, my uh, one of my remora came in, everything else stayed off the board. Uh, I drew Witch Hunter, so kill a Psyker, secure, secure objective four, which is over here, and um, win a challenge. So that, that wasn't going to happen. Um, let's see here. Uh, basically, 
bunch of stuff shot into the uh, Dreadnought, killed that. Um, broadside shot over and killed a few more Sanguinary Guard over here. And then the Riptide tried to charge the drop pod to kill it and uh, whiffed. So that didn't happen. But, oh, yes, and of course the Yvara jumped up in the sky using a Nova Charge uh, and then promptly fell over and lost one of its fins. So, I don't know, maybe he's not coming back next turn. I think that's the rule for that. But, all right, on to uh, Blood Angels turn two. Bottom of turn two, Blood Angels. Uh, pretty much everything came in except for the uh, Honor Guard, Death Company. Same thing, right? Not really. So the Death Company didn't come in. Uh, pod drop down here, unloaded uh, the second Dreadnought. Then uh, unit Assault Squad uh, here, Assault Squad there, and then um, the, the Honor Company, right? Honor Guard? Honor Guard, all the way over there. Deep struck here and mishapped on to the broadsides. Um, so they ended up in the corner um, after rolling a two on the mishap chart. Uh, what else happened? So the uh, Sanguinary Guard, Dante, and the Sanguinary Priest hopped up here. Um, then broadsides all intercepted the uh, two assault squad units and uh, whittled them down to their sergeants each. Uh, shooting phase, uh, some hot shots at, at um, the broadsides. And then this guy uh, unloaded on these guys. And again, I forgot to take my leadership, so let's do that. They're good. But this broadside unit uh, took a few wounds. And then uh, the Sanguinary Guard unit charged the Riptide, uh, inflicted one wound, and uh, the combat is continuing there. So that's the board on the end of turn two. Bottom of the top of turn three. So um, everything except for my last unit of crisis suits came in. Um, so that was two units of crew and uh, a remora, and then the Ivara came in from ongoing reserves. Uh, but what happened here? All right. So Remora came in over here. Uh, that one moved over there, and then the two units of crew came in on the side. Movement phase, nothing really happened. Uh, these guys pivoted up a little bit. Um, shooting phase, the uh, Ivara roasted the remaining uh, tactical marines over there. Um, and this dreadnought died to um, the uh, drones that did not intercept. And that was about it. Um, yeah, nothing really happened. So we do have to do the assault here, that is really. So I'll be back in a second and let you know how that went. All right, so Dante, the Sanguinary Priest, and the Sanguinary Guard versus Riptide. Uh, you know, they landed a few punches on me, especially because they have hatred against him due to uh, being part of the support cadre. Dante landing uh, four blows that uh, required him to make his five up invul. Look what I rolled. It was glorious. Kind of feel bad about it, but <laughs> all right. I feel so bad about every aspect of this particular battle. Yeah. So um, Riptide lost combat, but uh, did not flee. So they're locked in combat again. On to uh, Blood Angels, turn three. On to turn three, Blood Angels. Uh, not a lot happened. Uh, actually, the only thing that did happen was these guys were still in combat and uh, were unable to do any wounds to the Riptide. Riptide did one wound to Dante. That was it. Uh, but they're still locked in combat. On to uh, turn four. All right. Uh, after the top of turn four for Tau, my uh, students came in over here trying to sneak that objective. And of course, mishapped here. They're going to go on ongoing reserves. Um, let's see here. Uh, basically, killed that last guy using uh, the two Remoras that are both now in hover mode. Um, the Yvara hopped over there to claim that objective. And then this uh, broadside destroyed that drop pod and did one hull point over here. And then the crew just kind of ran around, um, not really doing anything. So, on to uh, Blood Angels turn four. All right, uh, bottom of turn four, we're going to call it. Uh, 
Gil just has his uh, guys over there that uh, you know aren't going to be able to do anything. And uh, these guys over here who are going to die this turn uh, if I were to shoot anything at them. And then this combat, which which just cannot get going. Um, just does not have enough guys here to really uh, get the critical mass, and so they're just kind of punching each other with, uh, you know, those big Hulk, Hulk gloves that you can buy, the foam Hulk gloves. That's what they're doing. They're just punching each other with those, so no one's really getting hurt. But uh, yeah, it's a good game. Uh, Tau victory with um, four of my objectives, one of his objectives, uh, plus first blood and uh, probably line breaker and other stuff. So uh, it was a good game, and uh, thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming. All right, so thanks for watching, like I said. Uh, but let's talk a little bit how the Yvar actually did. Um, it did really well. That, that's about the moral of the story there. Um, you know, it had a lot of strengths. Uh, I never even shot the, the um, Haywire cannon. Uh, I only used the Flamer and was just deleting uh, tactical squads left and right, um, which... You know, isn't surprising, right? Like, my strongest unit was, you know, killing his weakest unit, and that's not a big surprise. Uh, I think it probably would have been more difficult to deploy against a longer range army or an army that had um, more strength 7, strength 8, something that could actually shoot at it, right? Because the the strength of the Vivar is being close. And so if you're far away from it, the uh, invul save that it has is weaker. And so uh, Ivaras can be very susceptible to things like, you know, las cannons or knights or anything like that. So if any of that was present, um, it probably would have hurt the Ivar a little bit more. Um, and uh, as it turned out, the, he basically just ran around unchecked. So I think that's a big... Um, thing to consider when when looking at how well the Ivar did is that it wasn't against an army that was particularly well suited to kill it, uh, at least you know not in close combat and had uh, or excuse me at least not at range. He could have done some damage in close combat, but then he would have ran into the uh, you know two d three flamer shots right into the face, um, and with a relatively low mile count, count army, that can be uh, a big deterrent to charging uh, the Yvara. So, uh, yeah, I think the Yvara did really well. Uh, I probably would think that it needs a, a, either a you know, considerable point increase based on this or some uh, toning down of the, the Flamer weapon. Like I said, I didn't use the cannon at all, so I can't really even talk about that. But, you know... I also am considering those those contexts that I talked about before, and so I I think it probably could use a little bit of adjustment, but I think it's probably pretty close to being okay. I don't know. I'll have to play with it more, but let me know what you guys think of how Yvara did in the comments below, and like I said before, thanks for watching.